Hello and welcome back to Shooter's Doc Drink Dine Fort Lauderdale. I'm your host, Anna Reyes. On our last episode, we gave you a glimpse of Shooter's unique nightlife. Today, we're going to show you how we roll at our Sushi 101 class, how we get down with our live entertainment, and of course, some more delectable food, drinks, and fun in the sun. Let's do it! seriously with some of the most decadent delicacies you can savor. One of their most popular desserts is a key lime baked Alaska. Some guests came in from out of town to try it. Let's see what they thought. I'm Megan Galetti. This is my husband Ashton. We're from South Bend, Indiana and it's our last day here and I told him we just had to come here. It's the best place in Fort Lauderdale. Am I right? I, I agree. It's definitely it was great food, it's great atmosphere and it's a beautiful view. The baked key lime Alaska, our most popular dessert here, we take a classic key lime pie and we put a little twist on it with some elegance and we turn it into a baked key lime Alaska. It's one of those desserts that we could say ties in with the whole property of the experience. When you're under the palm trees, sitting having a glass of Prosecco and watching the boats come by, we torch the merengue to give it a nice color and give it a special texture and it really, really stands out above all of our desserts here. And you bite into the fresh key lime that we have on top of the lady fingers with the coconut daiquiri. It really ties in the whole property and the dining experience of what Shooters and Fort Lauderdale lifestyle is all about. And we get to finish everything off with our key lime baked Alaska and our coconut daiquiri sauce to top it off. Mm. All right. All right, are you not having any? Wow. Ooh. Oh crap. It's like fluffy? Yes. Oh my god, I'm failing. Sweet, but not too sweet. It's a perfect key lime. That's a key lime. Am I? What's the key lime? Key lime and key Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be working on our guava martini. It's made with our real McCoy rum. Real McCoy got its name. There was a gentleman named Bill McCoy during Prohibition in the 20s. He was a boat captain and he prided himself on keeping his rum as clean and pure as possible and was very prideful of that. And that's what we use in our guava martini. We also use a nice guava puree. We use fresh lime juice and a little bit of simple syrup just to sweeten it lightly. Very simple recipe. The guava plays into our menu and our tropicalness of the restaurant that we have here the sunshine outside, the boats. This particular drink pairs with our orange honey glazed salmon, certainly our coconut shrimp. We have a guava chili wings they would pair well with as well. Uh, certainly male, female, they all love this drink. Like I told you before that it's our only guava beverage on the menu that we serve. Why don't I go ahead and make the drink for us? We take an ounce and a half of the real McCoy rum, fresh lime juice, Little simple syrup just to sweeten things up a tad. Our fresh guava puree. It's topped with our edible orchid. Shooter's Waterfront Guava Martini. It is a very light style, basically a martini daiquiri uh, in one. Being with rum, most martinis are vodka or gin based, uh, but this with the real Mokoi rum acts as more of a, uh, a daiquiri style martini. Uh, certainly um, delicious, nutritious, and all those beautiful things. These ladies are being served the guava martini. I'm gonna ask them what they think of it. Hi ladies, hey. how's it going? So I couldn't happen but notice that you ordered the delicious guava martini. So I want to see what you think of it once you try it. So good. It's so refreshing and so light. Yeah. Are you usually a martini girl? Yes. Love so martinis. But it's not that sweet. Tangy. Good, good touch. Yeah. So how does this one stack up with your usual martinis? 
perfect. It just has that nice tangy, but not too sweet, perfect. We do, yeah. it's her birthday. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Can I go ahead and get some cocktails started for you? Perfect. Okay. Sounds great. Alright, I'll be right back. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Is it your well, first time too or no? It is my first time. Yeah, yeah. How, how amazing is this place? I've been here for a year and a half and I'm ashamed that I have not discovered this before. You should be because <laughs> kidding, this place is the best place for brunch as well. It is. Yes, it is. I love their oysters and I always get their unlimited mimosas and it's amazing. Did you say unlimited? I did. I did. All right, so this is honestly yeah, like one of my more. most favorite places to watch a sunset. It's really beautiful. I, I can't believe you've never been here. I know, I know. And honestly, the, the layout of this bar is incredible. Indoor, outdoor, rooftop, the turf, the like yeah. cabanas. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this no, in Lauderdale. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We are pretty blessed. It is. It is. <laughs> I could literally sit here all week and not yeah. move. Just if they had wine. apartments like attached to the building, that would yeah. be the only thing better. So, so. Oh my god, here comes. Speaking of which, <laughs> yeah, we're going to me. Wow. wow. Oh yeah. my goodness. Look at this rosé. Abby, how's your guava martini? It looks it so good. It's so good. It's like vibrant, it's fresh, it's fun, <laughs> but it's also like really elegant, not too sweet. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, that sangria doesn't look too bad either. Oh, that's so refreshing. I love, I know the, that, I love uh, the frosé too. Yeah, frosé is yeah. really big right Rose now. all day. <laughs> so is that, is that, I'm assuming, a frozen so, rosé? Yes. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what that means? It's so cold for this warm weather, it's great. Especially out here on this nice yeah. So it's rosé blended with ice? Yeah. yeah. It's so delicious. It's like a rosé slush. As if rosé could get any better. No. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, <laughs> Yeah. We've got a little toast for, yeah. for your yeah. birthday. Well, You're 21 again. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, really. I hope you enjoyed Here's your that. surprise. Woo. I would have not have wanted to celebrate my birthday any other way with you ladies. Oh. Gorgeous view. <laughs> yes. So thank you. Isn't that beautiful? Happy birthday. Thank thank you. Way, you. way better thank view than what you're used to. Cheers again and we'll do a little toast. Yeah, we'll do a champagne. Cheers yes. and a drink. Cheers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got great weather too. Woo! Woo! I love that sound. Yeah. Woo! Yes. Yes. Wow. 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 That's a birthday oh dessert. Wow. 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 Whoa. Oh my god. god. Oh, are you going to eat all these? Are you going to sit down? No with us? way. Thanks, Shooters. <laughs> wow. Here at Shooters, we always think of save the best for last. So when we put our dessert menu together, we really wanted to make a huge statement because at the beginning of the night, you're in awe of the beautiful people, the beautiful ambiance, the great food service. So we have to really look at a way, how do we top that off? And we said, what a better way than with huge, gigantic, homemade desserts from our pastry department here. Everything is made on property by our pastry chef, Monica Walker, and it's transformed over here onto our, our line, and we simply put these great ingredients together, and one of my favorites is the chocolate cake. How's the chocolate? Delicious. That's is incredible. it rich? Is it like really it's incredible. It's light. It's light. so good. People look at our chocolate cake and like, that's the size of your chocolate cake? It's a five layer homemade chocolate cake here, and that's just one regular order there. The reason we made it so big is like, whenever you're done eating that piece of chocolate cake, if you could finish that piece of chocolate cake, we, we end up putting it up in a box and you get to take it home and the next morning when you're having that cup of coffee and you realize, oh, there's a piece of chocolate cake in there. What better way to have your coffee with a piece of chocolate cake from Shooters and relive that memory that you had the night before. This is a work of art. This is literally a work it's, of it's art. A, it's almost <laughs> The next one is our bread pudding flan. It's a combination of two great worlds. The flan from the Caribbean and a bread pudding that you're used to having up north on a cold wintry day at your grandmother's house. So we decided to put the two together and then jazz them up a little bit in uh, the traditional shooter's way that we must always do. We make a uh, flan in the traditional way, but we also incorporate a brioche bread 
to give it some texture and it really comes out something really beautiful, smooth. The caramelizing of the sugars on top of the flan, it just pours and melts in your mouth as you eat it. We combine it with some nice caramel. What really makes this dish go over the top is that we paired it with some of our Banana Foster's ice cream. That's right, Banana Foster's ice cream that we make here. And it really just sends this over the top. We top that Banana Foster's ice cream with a little brown sugar touille and it really uh, just takes it to a different level. So whenever you have a bread pudding or a flan and you really want to go the extra mile and figure out how much more can I take this to the next level, you got to have the bread pudding Caribbean flan at Shooters. It's really, really tasty. The sauce on top of that, uh, what is that? That's amazing. Whoa. And they're like, they're like, yeah, the rub okay, is so I don't know. Good. You guys have to eat this one. Actually, no, don't eat it, so I, I can eat it all. <laughs> Just when you think you've seen it all, we take the pineapple upside down cake, a regular legend in its own rights, and we say, let's soup it up one even more notch. So we take two slices of a pineapple upside down cake, and we layer it with a mascarpone cheese. And then we take our dark red cherries, and we massacrate them with brandy, and we let them soak overnight. And then we top those generously on top, as you can see and those deep dark purple hues just drivel all over the plate. And then we say, hey, let's put a little bit of rum sauce on there as well too, to kick it up another notch. And once you bite into this, it's heaven. Whose birthday is next? Because I don't know. we have to come back. <laughs> we need another birthday celebration. to celebrate. I mean, why don't we just come back tomorrow? <laughs> I will make up another birthday. So yeah, we can redo this. Well, let's just make this a ritual every Sunday. Yeah. We'll, we'll do Girls' Celebrate Day. And we'll just pretend it's a birthday so we can get that chocolate cake. And that's that. We source many of our products from the local waters of Florida, or whether that be in the Florida Keys or whether that be on the west coast of Florida out of the Gulf. Products in particular are brought in almost on a daily basis. My trucks are on the road seven days a week, so we pick up daily off the docks. We receive about what is it, 40 pounds of mahi, 80 pounds of salmon, uh, yellowtail, whole fish. This is what we've been using for the cash of the month uh, later on today, okay? But they're coming in fresh every day. We don't see them fish here at all. We buy for the day. He's the guy responsible to get it here, and we get it seven days a week. A lot of the fish that lands on the dock is out of the water for roughly 12 hours. 12 hour period moving forward from there, it's brought to Shooter's Waterfront. So a lot of the uh, procedures as far as checking in the quality of the product, uh, specifically the yellowtail snapper, you would look at the eyes, the gills, make sure they're nice and red. There's no odor coming from the fish. We are back with executive chef Roberto Santiago and for the dish of the month, we have some on papillot with some of the freshest fish you will find. Now, what exactly does on papillot mean? It actually in French it means parchment. We're gonna wrap a fillet of uh, yellowtail in parchment paper with some vegetables and then we're gonna pop that in the oven. We're gonna start by filleting this fish. It keeps the freshness when we get a whole fish, so we, we'd rather do that even that we do a lot of volume. We'd rather take the whole fish and butcher that in house and uh, to give you guys the best freshness available. Now let's talk about all these colorful ingredients we have. So we have uh, these summer squash, baby squash that we pre-grilled. So we are, we are pre-cooking all this stuff because it's gonna take only about seven to eight minutes to cook that piece of fish. So we wanna start with some red bleached potatoes that are already steamed. Then these nice uh, baby vegetables, summer vegetables, just to keep it fresh. Some uh, fresh thyme, fresh tomatoes, and then a compound butter that we do at the house here. Delicious. Yep. Now, how did you come up with the concept for this dish of the month? So this is actually a very traditional way, very old way uh, in France. We just wanted to give our twist with the fresh Florida fish and the summer vegetables for Florida as well. So it's, it's great. It's a healthy dish, vibrant, colorful. I mean, people love it. We're we'll start with the whole fish. I'm going to make an incision here right where the head is. Make sure all those bones are cut up and then uh, We'll start by going here under the skin, all the way following the bones. Then now uh, we're gonna skin that off by holding the skin, making an incision and holding the skin up. Very sharp knife for sure. We need a very sharp knife. How long did it take you to perfect that? I mean, you do it so so quickly and easily. A couple of years. We do a lot of fish here, so we'll do about 
30 for for one day so that will take 15 fish every day seven days let's start assembling the dish okay we're gonna start by putting some of that butter compound butter on the bottom of the parchment start with the red bleached potatoes that are being already blanched and pre-cooked because the fish is gonna take a couple minutes about seven minutes or so and uh, we want all these veggies to be already pre-cooked we're just heating them up then we're gonna put a little bit of salt pepper over those, we're gonna do layers of flavors here. Some, some of that compound butter. So that's gonna melt down the, the, the potatoes and gonna give all that flavor to it. So what's inside the butter? Uh, inside the butter, we reduce white wine with shallots until it's almost like a marmalade. Then we whip the butter very uh, fluffy and add uh, parsley, oregano, all fresh, Parmesan cheese, um, garlic fresh, roasted garlic as well. We add a lot of uh, aromatics to make this uh, an experience. Once you open that paper, all those flavors are gonna show and you're gonna be able to see them all, smell them all, it'd be great. So now we just, this is randomly, we're just gonna add vegetables all around. We're gonna add these baby heirloom tomatoes here that are uh, fresh, so that's gonna add some uh, moist to the dish as well. Uh, so fresh thyme. Another uh, small piece of that butter. Uh, salt pepper before that, right over it, some of that butter. Such a beautiful dish. Yes, and after that, we're gonna start folding in. We cover it completely, side to side, make sure it's all in there. So the technique here is to uh, fold and then uh, twist. Twist and fold, I'm sorry. Twist and fold. You wanna make sure all that steam is gonna stay in there. So you don't wanna have any holes, any any uh, place for the for the air to escape. Now we're gonna cook the fish for about 10 to 12 minutes in a 350 degree oven, okay? Then we'll come back to it in about 10 minutes. Here we go, oven's ready. I'm gonna slide that right on the plate. Some lemons. And then the best part, fish is ready and out of the oven. This is the final product. And here is Chef Roberto bringing these lovely ladies the dish of the month. I'm gonna go see what they think of it. Hi ladies, how are you today? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. I see that you're trying the special dish of the month. What inspired you to order this today? Um, it looks super flavorful and very healthy you know, full of vegetables and sounds like just a great piece of fish. Yes, now let's get the verdict. What do you think of it so far? Wow, that honestly, I taste a lot of fish. I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat chicken or beef. I only eat fish and that is amazing. I really, really like that. So this is a perfect dish for you, only eating fish. I mean, it's light, it's lemony, it's zesty. Um, it's not too heavy at all. Um, it's baked perfectly. I love it, wow. I really, really love it. I have wine. Yes. <laughs> that goes perfectly with it as well. Yeah, it definitely does. Yes. I'm glad you enjoy it. The proof is in the pudding. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, we're sitting on the water, so it looks, I mean, it tastes like it's straight out of the water. It really does. And it is. It was swimming there this morning. Yes. <laughs> that is delicious. I know. It's just, it's tasty. A lot of times, fish could be dry and just not as, but cooked the way they have it in the, the, the pouch. It's just... Oh my goodness, yes. delicious. Super flavorful. Yes. So you can feel the flavor from the butter, the special butter that they made, the compound butter. Um, you know, it just melts and it makes everything nice and moist. And I guess you can taste those flavors in there. Oh, it's delicious, absolutely. And a nice compliment with a great glass of wine with my beautiful daughter. Aw, well I'm glad uh, you ladies are so adorable. I'm glad that you're enjoying the fish and you're enjoying the dish of the day. You know, make sure you come back every month they have a new dish of the day, okay. but um, and also there's a fresh catch of the day every day. So Thank enjoy you. it. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Enjoy your time. Thank Bye, you. ladies. Thanks. <laughs> you may like sushi, but have you ever learned how to roll your own sushi? Well, you can now right here at Shooters. Follow me to watch how we roll. You didn't know Shooters was going to look this nice up here, did you? Well, welcome to our Shooters Sushi 101. This is our... Uh, our fun way of uh, getting you introduced into sushi and having some fun with it. And we'll walk you through it. It's really, really, really simple. 
But welcome, this is our second floor of shooters. We opened it up in February of this year. It used to be back in the 80s heyday, the uh, room that you didn't want to know that was up here, but, but you made it up here. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots of stories that go around, but uh, we renovated this room up here. We actually have uh, three private uh, rooms for private dining, and we have our all types of wine events up here, birthdays, anniversaries, and Sushi 101 class today. So welcome everybody. Again, my name's Peter Lopez. This is Chef Brian over here. <laughs> chef Brian is uh, the executive chef of Grateful Palate. Over here we have Cayenne, your sushi chef over there. And on the far corner over here we have Dominique. So we're gonna break you guys up here. These two tables, we'll go over see Dominique. These two tables over here, we'll see Brian. And the other two tables over here, we'll see Cayenne, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to show you how to roll your first roll. And your first roll is the hamachi. So we'll walk up to the tables and the chefs are gonna have everything laid out. They're gonna talk about the nori, they're gonna talk about the rice, they're gonna talk about the sharp knives that you can't touch. <laughs> we always have somebody that wants to touch the sharp knives, but we can't let you. And they're gonna show you how to do the rolls and talk about the essence of sushi rolling. Then while you were up there, the servers, everybody wave your hand, servers, they're gonna bring all the ingredients out to your table in what we call maison place. Everything's gonna be in its place. So when you come back and sit down, you get a chance to roll it for yourself now. Before we get up to do the rolls, we have to do a little tradition that we have. On the count of three, we gotta say, that's the way we roll, and then we'll go up and see the chefs. Everybody ready? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Ah, I love it. All right, come on up to the tables, everybody. For us, we want our sushi big, bold, beautiful, crazy. Because how many times do you go to eat sushi? And you eat it, and after you eat it, you're like, wow, did I just eat something? Yeah. Right? <laughs> All the time. Right? So our, our sushi for us has to be you know, memorable. It's got to be it's got to be big, and it fills you. It's, it's big enough for a meal. So you'll see that the size of this sushi tonight is what we serve downstairs. Hi, ladies. So is this the first time you've rolled? Yes, it has actually the first time I've rolled. <laughs> So what did you think about the experience? It was actually easier than I thought it would be. Delicious, very good. Are you gonna now go home and make some sushi at home? Probably, I'll save a lot of money if I make it at home. <laughs> rice, correct. Then that, I think that's the key, right? The rice. So what's the occasion that brought you here today? We just love shooters and we heard there was an awesome event, so we wanted to come and learn how to make some sushi. We never knew we had so many sushi rollers in the house here. So if, is everybody full? Anybody full? Good, good, good. Because if you're full and you want to know how you might be able to want to work that off, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at 8.30 down on the lawn there where the lights are, we have our yoga class. Our yoga class is right here. We move all the furniture out there and we have free yoga from 8.30 to 9.30 every Saturday. And, and not that this is a reoccurring theme, but after yoga, we have free mimosas. So not that we have, you know, sake, mimosas, sushi, but that's, it's free, it's every Saturday, all right? All right, so the next one that we're gonna roll is called a JB, a Japanese bagel roll. Is everybody ready to go up and roll? All right, we gotta do it on the count of three. That's the way we roll. One, two, three. All righty, come on up. Like on a typical night like tonight, we'll we'll roll 140 rolls tonight. 140 rolls. So I think we've got big guy back here, an application. Uh, so, all right, here we go. JB roll. Enjoy. Your sushi rolls were so delicious that they're already gone. You ate them in like five seconds. How were they? Super good. They were very, very tasty, and it's my first time, and I had a great time, and it was awesome. 
Yes. Was this your first time as well? Yeah, I've never rolled sushi before. It was super fun and easy. <laughs> it's like a super cool Friday night kind of thing. You make your own food and you eat it right there. Yeah, it's a cool experience. How about you? What did you think about the entire unique experience? I thought it was awesome. The guy was great. He showed us what to do. Um, he made it really easy. He showed us at the end how to make it all tight and like make it a good roll. And then he cut it for us, and it was great. You know, it tastes a little better when you're making it yourself, right? Yeah, it gives you that love put into it. <laughs> when was the last time that you received a diploma for drinking sake, rolling sushi, and having fun? Anybody? No. Oh, no, you can't. You can't. So guess what? Chefs are going to hand out diplomas to you tonight for completing Sushi 101. That was such a unique and delicious experience. Makes for the perfect date night, girls night out, birthday celebration, or just for fun. They have classes once a month, so make sure to sign up at ShootersWaterfront.com. The Shooters Experience goes beyond docking, drinking, and dining. It offers live entertainment across all genres with some of the best bands around. We're with Gene and Angel of The Backups, one of the favorite bands right here at Shooters. Now, first of all, how did you come up with the name The Backups? Uh, because we're always ready to back it up, no matter what. That's right, and Shooters is a great place to back it up, right? It's our favorite place. Favorite place to back it up. The crowd is always good. The view is incredible. The food is awesome. We can't complain. One of the best spots. That's right. And how long have you been playing here and how often do you play here? Uh, it's usually twice a month that we play here. And the crowd really reacts to us. So it's, it's, so it's like a second home. So what kind of music do you play? So the backups plays a lot of classic rock, a lot of top 40s pop, but we also try to mix it up and see. We do get requests all the time and we're always waiting for people to come up and sing with us if they want. A lot of 80s, people love the 80s, so we definitely do a lot of, little bit of that. We're especially excited for Rock the Duck. This is the sun, fun, and music event of the year taking place right here at Shooters in July, August, and September. For more information, go to ShootersWaterfront.com. You don't want to miss it. I will definitely be swinging around. I got some really good friends playing, and it's always a good time. Always a good time at Rock the Dock, and just Shooters is a perfect place to do it, too. Once again, today's episode demonstrated that Shooters Waterfront is way more than just an incredible restaurant. It's a place where people come to be entertained and learn something new. It's also the perfect place to celebrate any occasion, such as Father's Day, which is coming right up. So make sure to make your reservations. For Shooters Dock Drink Dine Fort Lauderdale, I'm Anna Reyes, and I'll see you next time. We hit roughly around 800 guests throughout the day. Um, throughout lunch, it does tend to slow down a little bit, but we have a little more connection with the guests during the day, the slower day. Um, and yeah, throughout the day, we over probably hit over 1,000 for Saturdays and Sundays. I believe the best thing would be, honestly, just seeing how everyone does work together at the end of the day to get through it. Um, it could be a lot at certain points, but just meeting all the different type of guests really do have a big impact of how Shooters was back in the day. Um, in the early 80s, I have a bunch of guests that come in with business cards saying that this place just used to be off the chains. And then once they are leaving, they say it feels like it hasn't changed. Obviously it has changed with the interior, but at the end of the day, I feel like it's still the same Shooters where you just have a good time.